Hello, who this? This is the Secretary of Communication for North Korea. Our Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un is interested in doing an interview with Dave Skylark. Oh my god. We will meet 50 kilometers west of Dang Dong, northeastern China. Did you just say China? And did you just say Dong? Hello, welcome to What the Flick. Christy, Matt, Alonzo, Ben. We're starting out this really busy, busy end of the year time with a discussion of a movie that's not even coming out. It is called The Interview. Perhaps you've heard of it. These guys have all seen it. I was going to see it tonight. Yeah. I missed it last week when you guys all went. I had something else to do. I was going to go see it tonight, and that is clearly not happening now. So please, somebody describe <laughs> the very difficult plot of The Interview. Uh, okay, so James Franco stars as a very kind of glib uh, celebrity interviewer, TV host type. That's why we can't have ice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, and Seth Rogen is his producer who kind of hankers to do hard news. Uh, so Franco's character finds out that Korean despot Kim Jong-un, big fan of the show. Uh, so he decides to set up an interview. And once the interview is going to happen, the CIA approaches these guys about, about their, their interest in uh, assassinating Kim Jong-un. What could go wrong for anyone? Take a look. Three weeks from tonight, I will be traveling to Pongyang, North Korea, to interview President Kim Jong Un. Mr. Rappaport, I am Agent Lacey with Central Intelligence. You two are going to be in a room alone with Kim, and the CIA would love it if you could take him out. Hmm? Take him out. For coffee? Dinner. For uh, kimchi? No, uh. Take him out. You want us to kill the leader of North Korea? Yes. What? Hello, North Korea! Nice tank! Is that real? It was a gift to my grandfather from Stalin. In my country, it's pronounced Stallone. You have a sound system in here? Oh, no, 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 don't, 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 don't touch. Katy Perry? I never heard this before in my life. I love Katy Perry. Really? As you should across the sky, sky, sky. <laughs> okay, so regardless of the fact that, you know, terrorists shut this film down. Yes. Is it any good? I think it's pretty funny. Yeah? Yeah, it's it, not, it's not really funny, but it's pretty funny. It, it is, it is funny in that I laughed Constantly, there are always funny things happening, but it doesn't. I think that's the definition of funny. Right. Well, exactly. But, but but I'm saying it doesn't. But it doesn't build in any sort of way. It doesn't. No. It's certainly not in any way kind of a smart satire about politics or the media or any of the kind of things you'd expect. It's just kind of gag, 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 which is fine. But I think. But I got more than that out of something like, say, this is the end or Pineapple Express, which these guys previously collaborated on. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I think I like this much better than this is the end. I think it did say something a little bit smart about. Politics and the sort of our fascination with, uh, uh, you know, with the, the 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 predominance of celebrity media over sort of quality of newsroom type mm -hmm. news. Uh, there's an interesting conversation that Seth Rogen's character has with an old uh, journalism school buddy who's now a producer at 60 Minutes and is incredibly sort of dismissive of him. And the sort of premise of the movie is that is that uh, uh, Franco is uh, plays, uh, you know, I don't know what the, it, it's as if Imagine if Maury Povich's show were on every night at seven o'clock and competed right. with the news. Or if, if he, he I, th I thought of him as kind of a melding of like Larry King yeah, and right. and uh, Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> or even Piers Morgan. <clears throat> yeah, right. sure. Right. I mean, it's it's celebrity based, heavily celebrity based, and they and that's really and they sort of aggressively, it's all they care about. But then Seth Rogen's character sort of wants something more, partly because of that conversation, because he's capable of something more, and I think he's really the best part. Of the movie. Right, but that that all happens in the first 15 minutes, and then they kind of drop it. And then it's pretty much right, like then it's, just they well, go, then, right. then it's Abbott and Costello meet Hitler, basically, you know, <laughs> which is fine. Although, I mean, the weird thing about the whole the whole fact that this movie got greenlit in the first place is kind of nuts because I mean. We uh, even it, it, we didn't we didn't make movies about people trying to kill Hitler until after Pearl Harbor. Like we were actually at right. war with Germany. He's a sitting head of he, state. This right? is, so the, so <laughs> Sony greenlit a movie about the assassination of a sitting head of state and never thought, oh well, this isn't going to be a this isn't going to have blowback. You know, oh. I mean, I think that once you make the film, you are then committed to having to release it, and they should have released it, and they shouldn't have backed down. Was The Great Dictator not made before but Pearl the, Harbor? But The Dictator, but that's not about assassinating him. That's okay. just a lampoon. And even like Team America, 
No one kills Kim Jong Il in that movie, and there's even kind of an affectionate kind of take on him as being lonely. You know, the, yeah. the, there's, there's an the sympathy toward there's him. There's an affectionate take you know? on him as being kind of lonely in this movie too. Uh, Kim yeah. Jong Un. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, I felt Don't like the, not Ill. I, I think this movie is funny. I think that the biggest problem with this movie is that it it's trying to do too much at the same time. I think that there are some sharp moments of kind of skewering celebrity journalism, yeah. and then it kind of drops the ball on that. It kind of gets into political comedy. And kind of drops that. It's it's never. It wants to kind of make jokes about everything, and in doing that, it kind of hits the middle and and doesn't really do any of them particularly well. I think that they're so interested in keep hitting jokes as many times as possible that you it gets distracting. And it's. It, I felt as a viewer like I kept getting like, okay, now we're doing, now we're. Now we're goofing on journalism. Now we're goofing on politics. Now we're goofing on the CIA yeah, and, I think and action movies. And as opposed to something like uh, Tropic Thunder, which I think melds a lot of that together really well, this one doesn't do that as well. But it's still really funny. I think you hit on something because it actually ends up, what surprises me abstractly about this, other than the obvious assassination, uh, and, you know, we're, we're, it's, not, it's not even so much really an assassination there at the end. It's just a... Right, a you know, madhouse chase where the bad guy right. gets killed, um, but it, it ends up feeling like it was fairly safe. It didn't feel like it was massively well, I, that it, they that they push things. I mean, I think they, <coughs> I, I think you're right. They sort of stumbled into the middle ground. I don't think it was their intent. But well, here's I mean. the thing, <clears throat> I, and, and this I, I'm not going to. I don't think this counts as a spoiler because it's been discussed in the leaked memos. Oh, yeah. uh, so if you've been the paying way attention, he gets you know this happens. <laughs> the way he gets killed is rather graphic and you know over the top. And the problem with that is that the film sets up the idea that they don't have to assassinate him if they can make him look human in front of That's the right. North Korean television audience and they'll know he's not like a god born of the butterflies or whatever the mythos around him is. they'll weaken him to the they'll point They'll weaken him. Right. That's all they have to do. And then the people inside North Korea who want to overthrow him will have you know, that'll give them leverage to do so. And that's a cool idea, and they pursue it for a while, and then, now nah, we're gonna blow them up anyway. It's like, right. you know, it, 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 it could have been cleverer, and it could have been I more that would have been like, on like, point. Like having a, having a Charlie Brown like Kim Jong Un at the end of like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that would have been, so I, right, I don't even think it was that necessary, the ending that they had. I think the biggest weakness of the movie, before we talk about the controversy a little bit around, the biggest weakness of the movie, I think, is Franco, because I think that that, that he doesn't quite get. You know, he's just like one of the best actors around. He can, he's capable of greatness. Is he? I think he's really good at times. He's mm -hmm. been phenomenal, I think. Uh, but then I'm not sure he's great at this sort of satire, and it's hard to do because he really, you know, normally the the sort of <clears throat> the Larry King Ryan Seacrest hybrid character is a bit player in a movie, and it's funny for a little bit. Right, mm. and he's got two or three scenes where you make fun of him. Franco has to carry this movie with Rogan. They're in every scene that's about them, and he's in. It. He's as much a star of it as as, as Rogan is, even though he was paid about a million and a half dollars. <laughs> uh, as we know from as the emails, know, <laughs> right? As we know, pointlessly from the emails. But the um, so I think that like that is hard to do uh, to find because I did not really believe him, and I don't think I'm applying the my standards of knowing people in this business. I just don't think he was either sort of an object of ridicule quite enough or straight enough or he it, that part really felt kind of overplayed and not believable to me. Yeah, not, like, whereas like, Rogan's character, I Like Will Ferrell it. would know how to play That's that right. kind uh, of idiot. Right, right. He more commits, than I think Franco does. Ferrell That's commits right. to it, and you believe in the universe of the news. Of that, the news, of, the of local news, right. Of local news that he is... Both a buffoon a and yet God. also right. but, revered, but, but, but also revered, revered and attractive. Yeah. And I felt like Franco wouldn't let the character be buffoonish enough. He was more interested, and I think somewhat the writing lets him down too. More interested in showing him as, oh yeah, he's attractive and gets all the girls he wants. And yeah, even though there's there's a, he's a little bit of a buffoon, super but, gay subtext going on with him. But yeah, well, but, uh, as always in a Seth Rogen movie. Right. Ben Mankiewicz, what's your number? I gave it a seven. It's pretty okay. funny. I give it a 5.2. I mean, I, I was entertained, but I just, I, it falls so short of what it might have been. Okay, Matt. Uh, six and a half. Okay, so their average is 6.2 with 50% on the tomato meter. And it's probably going to stay in with there for the rest of our lives. With only a handful of reviews, like right, only about yeah. 20 or 30 reviews You guys so are far. special and fancy. You saw it early. All right, bye. Thanks.